Scene on BBC Radio London with Ori Styler. This is The Scene. And also an actor who's going to let us know what he's up to. What's going on, Jade McRae? You good? What's going on? I'm good, brother. You all right? I'm good. I'm good. Nice, nice. I only found out today. I mean, I know you're a, a father, but that thing seems to run in your family. Hmm. Something like that. Something like that. <laughs> nah, nah, come closer. Come, let's talk. Come closer <laughs> to that microphone. Firstly, you're saying mm, something like that, right? But you yourself, you're, you're an actor. Uh, and you've also got boys. And uh, I believe your oldest is an actor as well. He tries. <laughs> he, try- <laughs> you- he tries. He tries. <laughs> he tries. He tries. He tries. Yeah, okay. he's... he's- He's following he's gonna be. He's going to be good. He's going to be good. No Even way. the baby, to be fair. Yeah? yeah How yeah, was the baby? Yeah. One. Oh, a little one. one. Ah. All right, so tell me. So you've uh, acted uh, and done many commercials and starred in West End stuff like uh, Whistle Down the Wind. Yeah. And Lion King. Yep. Very humble. You're just sitting there chilling <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, I've done that. Let's, now, let's... Do you know what it is? Um, I, would call, I would say I was a child actor. Okay. Um, I started acting, got noticed on the street and um, kind of went from there. And then I kind of wanted to pursue my career in football. And when that hit the roof, I kind of just went into depression mode. Like I just stopped everything. Didn't you, think I was going to be anything. When you so, say hit the roof, what, what had happened? So I got released from the club that I was at. Okay. So when that happened to me, I kind of just thought, nothing's going to happen for me. Like, forget it. Just went into... Now I'm 28. I know that. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry. We didn't hear what number that was. Could you just repeat that one more time for those who, the, no. for those who used to be 28 and are wondering why you're hiding that number? Well, I feel old now. You're the youngest in the room. Oh wow. Okay. <laughs> and now I'm 28. There you go. I see the pride there kicks in. Now, now I'm 28. I kind of realised that you know what? I was kind of depressed. Okay. For me to just give up everything, I, I was depressed. And um, so yeah, that happened. And then I just started working. Worked hard never never not been working full time mm. since the age of 16 so even when I was at college after college I was going straight to work from work I was a Saturday and Sunday I was going to work I was working and then had a baby and then I just kind of like just thought nothing was going to happen and then 2017 I saw my partner introduced me to her friend who's Dwayne in Hollyoaks now and okay. Zach, he plays Zach, Zach I'm right, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah and he I saw him when I was working at Car Giant and he was like, are you not, like, what are you doing here kind of thing? Mm. And then he just said like, you need to get back into it. And the little talk that he had with me just hit a nerve, man. And I just, I'm doing it now. Well, any, anything in there he said specifically that made you go, nah, I got to sort myself out or I got to go down this path again with acting. Anything specific that hit you? He just said, you're better than you think you are. And from, from when he said that, and he's never seen me act. But it was just because I was putting myself down so much mm. and because he knew what I had done, he was just like, you're better than what you think you are. And he probably doesn't even remember that chat because it was just normal to him. But for me, that was that was big. That was big. It meant a lot. Mm. And since then, things have been happening. So I can't say too much, but... <laughs> oh, it was one of those ones. It's tough. I can't say too much, but I just like... I've been signed to an agency that I never ever thought would happen and Congratulations. things is things is happening. So yeah. Nice. So you I mean from what it says here, you uh went to the uh, after after you had the conversation with uh with Dwayne, went to the identity school. Yeah. Of acting I went and, to identity. And Middleton and uh, Middle Newton Academy as well. Yeah. Um yeah, so identity is obviously everyone knows what that is. Mm. We're John Biega, Letitia White, Leo, Leonie Elliott, people like that. Um so I went there studied for about six months um brilliant don't have a bad word to say about the school um it was brilliant um i then because of the times and my work and stuff i couldn't commit so much so then i went to middle newton which was more of an evening thing okay um, and they focus predominantly on screen acting which is what i kind of fell in love with um and then since then i think i, f- I finished middle newton probably just end of last year and since then I've just been doing just little things here and there and then just got myself an agent but I was signed to an agent last year but okay. they were very small got signed to a big agent this this year about a month ago and um are we allowed you, you say 
Are we allowed to say who the agent is or allowed, allowed to tell us? Because before you were like, I can't say too much. No, no, I can say my agent. That's, oh, okay. that's not that's not what I, I'm signed to Global Eyes, but that's that's not oh, what congrats. I was. Yeah, thank you. That's not what I was. I'm just saying I can't say too much because I don't like to. Um, I like to show people what I'm doing rather than rather say than speaking. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's just me. Let's let's take it back to something you said earlier on. Um, after football, you went. You got into a point where um, you felt was it depressed. Yeah. Which is something I'm quite I'm I'm quite uh, in tune with now and understanding that uh, especially with men and depression never really gets addressed. Was there anything at the time other than the conversation that you said uh, you had with Dwayne? Is there anything at the time that you uh, f- was doing to try and have a seek help for depression, or is it more just living no, in that and you know trying what? to bring yourself? As a kid, I, I didn't know that I was depressed, and you you grow up in a Caribbean household like. When you get to sixteen, you you better go get a job because me alone now pay the bill. You get so you, 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 there was no like there was no time for me to be like, oh mum, you know I'm, I think something's wrong with me because I don't think I'm gonna be anything. There, there was no time for that. There was that conversation never happened. Mm. <laughs> it was simply you, you get you give out your CV. Then that, that Literally was it. That, yeah. <laughs> that was it. As soon as as soon as I I remember doing my GCSEs, my mum said to me straight away, you need to go get that job. No. And all when I was going college full time, my mom was telling me Saturday and Sunday, if you, you work, and just nonstop, nonstop. Yeah. And then, but now I look at my friends, who were not from a Caribbean household, and they were living the dream, like no working, they were just going to college, going home, doing their thing, and mm. not saying it was wrong, but that's just how I was brought up as in a Caribbean household. And for me, I'm so grateful for it now because. My mom has showed me so much responsibility, and especially now I've got two kids. Like, I now know that I don't have time to even think for a second that I can just come out of work because I need to provide for my family. It has to become the norm. Yeah, it has to be. It's just as much as breathing, eating. I need to get exactly. out of work and to make that money. Me wanting to pursue my acting career that hasn't stopped me. The fact that I work full time hasn't stopped me. It just means that I've got to work a little bit extra to make sure that I can financially support myself if I need to take a day off and things like that. See, this is this is always a, a thing when it comes to uh, working full time and then going to what would be considered as uh, self-employed work where you have to build up your own career and entertainment yeah. is one of those things. People feel that you have to give up one to start the other. And in many cases you do, but you then do. It's, it's a difficult journey to do when you have got responsibilities like children to pay for. The only thing I would say to people is don't give up working until you get something big. Something that's going to continuously pay you. Mm. So soaps, things like that, you can stop working because you're going to get continuous money. Yeah. But doing a commercial here and there, I wouldn't say stop working because those things come and go. You might get work for a month. Next three months, get nothing. Yeah. <laughs> so and even when you get the commercial, <laughs> that you're not getting paid then. You, you don't get, get paid, paid straight away. Months I, later. I did a job recently, and I say recently, but I'm talking two months ago, mm. and I got paid the other day. And it's not so you don't so know when it's going to come. You don't so, know when it's going to yeah. come, so you just gotta just keep working, man. Nice. And what's next? After I mean, I I, I saw what you to say. What? No, no, no. What's so the, look, there so is, basically, you go on. <laughs> you're saying what's next? There's got. I know there's something that you. That there's got there's to be opportunities. Some, okay. That's that's coming. <laughs> you're not giving. And that, I know they're he's coming. He's not giving anything away. <laughs> <laughs> and I know they're coming. Do you know what? Listen, when when I first, when I went for the meeting with my now agent, I was so like, I wasn't very enthusiastic. I was just downplaying myself a lot. Mm. And the way that lady spoke about my talent was unreal. So now I'm just telling you it's going to happen. Because <laughs> I know, I know it's going to happen. I'm not saying there's nothing lined up, but I'm not saying there is. There is. Okay. But I know it's gonna happen, yeah, and yeah. <laughs> this <laughs> year is my year. So I'm. I'm not. I'm not telling anybody. It's just, <laughs> when you see me, you see me, innit? You know when. <laughs> you know when they reject an offer on Dragons Den. Like, <laughs> this is this is my year. I'm telling you, the offers in. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. When you see that, me, yeah. And then two twos. We've me. all got the shamwell. That's the one that they said no to, you know. I told you, I told you. And this is and this yeah. is exactly what my agent was saying to me. Like how many times have you been told no? And how many times people said like I got a lazy eye. Prime example, I got a lazy eye. Mm. And 
So many agencies have said to me, oh, you know, you need to go and sort it out. You need to go. No, let me sort it out myself. Don't tell me I'm not going to get any work because I've got a laser eye because that's rubbish. Because what's that actor? Whitaker. He's got a big lazy eye. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he's, he does. No, that eye and is in bed. He's a phenomenal actor. <laughs> that eye doesn't even pick up doll. <laughs> and he's a phenomenal actor. <laughs> and don't don't forget DB. Debo yeah, as well. Debo, yeah. Debo yeah. as well. What, what? And, and, but yeah, they're phenomenal actors and they get work. Yeah. So, and I'm better looking. So, <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean? That, like, don't tell me I'm not going to get no work. <laughs> <laughs> How can you argue with that confidence? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I gotta like I just to ask, I mean, does that is that something that really people have said you, you've got a lazy eye, yeah. so you're not gonna Yeah. Oh yeah, I can yeah. believe that. Hundred percent. I was told I've been told even even so the previous agent I had, you know when someone's trying to be nice, mm. he said to me, you know, I think you should kinda look into, you know, sorting it out because I don't think it's helping, you know, getting your auditions and things like that. And I'm like, whoa, how about approach me and say, ask me, you know, how do you feel about it? How do you feel about getting it done? It was just like, you know, you're not going to get any work. And don't get me wrong. I want to sort it out, but I want to do it in my own time. Mm, do it for you. Yeah. Not in the time of other people saying you got to get it done so we can. It can't be it. that bad. Yeah. How do you my guy's nice. Lazy, how do you sort out a lazy eye? Well, you give it a job. No, you got. Uh, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> this is why you kind of a comedian. <laughs> Talk about something serious. You got to have, uh, have you really? You got to have operation. Is it like a muscle you know what, in there? The thing is, they say that the operation is there's risk. You can get one eye can go blurry, things like that. But mm. the left eye is all right. So <laughs> I don't moment. think. I, honestly, I don't think it's that much of a big deal. Mm. Seriously. Yeah. Mine ain't too bad. Ha- when I'm tired or when I have a drink. Then, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, listen, Jade's in the building. I've also got, sorry, Jade McRae's in the building. I've also got the She Jade in the building. Darren Harriet. We're going to go to the news, but right after the news, we're going to get into some topics, conversations. We'll find out more about, you were saying about lazy eye and stuff. <laughs> There's more to come. Don't worry. It's BBC Radio London, the scene. My name's Ori Styler. Don't go anywhere.